Shalom everyone, this is Amir Tsarfati. I am live from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and this is going to be a super, super important and, and very, very informative, both post-election and Middle East update, and I sure hope that you can push or press the share button right now, because we will not have this update long on Facebook with the content that we have here today. So press the share button and uh, we are going to enjoy it. Uh, I'm gonna invite my good friend, Pastor Barry Stagner from Southern California. And you are Barry, uh, we are here, ladies and gentlemen, going to give you a very, very important update on few things. What is the situation right now? And what are the options of Trump from here on, as well as what is the immediate effect of the political chaos in America on the Middle East? There's already effect. There is actually a ripple effect all across the globe. We'll talk about that. But uh, Pastor Barry, do us an honor and let's start it with a prayer, okay? All right. There you go. Father, we are thankful for our countries and we thank you for your commitment to us, and we thank you for the promise of the psalmist that there is a blessing for the nation whose God is the Lord, the people you've chosen uh, as your inheritance. So we're grateful uh, for the countries that you blessed us to live in and uh, for their great love for you, respect for you. And we pray, God, that you would bless our time now. We pray for both of our countries uh, and Rio as well, Lord, and Brazil and all the countries around the world that are in need of you. Uh, Lord, we pray this time is uh, anointed by your spirit and blessed by you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So again, shalom, everyone. It's Amir Tsalfati, and this is Pastor Barry Stagner with me today from California. I'm in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This is a post-election update, and let me start um, right there. Uh, Pastor Barry, I want to start with what, what, where we left earlier a few days ago, and of course, let me go back to, I'll take you back to Pennsylvania because this is the key state in this whole thing. Um, Pennsylvania with its 20 electors. Let me take you back in October of 31st, 2019, the um, Republican led House of Representatives of Pennsylvania legislated the Act 77. Act 77 actually is in preparation for the elections when they uh, needed to set place and method of uh, and date of, of all the stuff that is going on in their state. The legislator in Pennsylvania decided that all mail-in votes must be all up until 8 p.m. on the day of the elections. In other words, it's not fair for anything that comes after just like a person that goes to vote in person cannot vote after the polls are over. And so the legislator uh, on Act 77, legislated by the Pennsylvania legislator on, on, on October 31st, 2019, set that rule. We all know what happened when the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, led by four super liberal judges, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania basically decided to have its own rules, bypass le the legislator, decided there is a pandemic, it's a natural disaster, therefore we are going to allow, watch this, we will allow ballots even after 8 p.m., but listen to this, however, they will be set aside um, and not be touched until later. But watch this. We will allow anything that comes after 8, after 8 p.m. as long as the date is November 3rd. In other words, it cannot come and uh, it cannot uh, uh, arrive and, uh, after that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain what happened. On And of course, that made the legislators angry. The Republican Party of Pennsylvania appeal to the Supreme Court. We heard that uh, Judge Roberts um, and joined the other three. And then when it was tie four and four, 
the decision of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania remained valid. Now, let me, let me explain something. We need to understand this thing made it after the election day, just a couple of days ago, made it to the Supreme Court of the United States and Justice Samuel Alito ruled the following thing. Listen to me now. He's one of the very conservative justices. There is a new uh, Supreme Court in America right now with a majority of conservatives. This is something that last month we couldn't say. That's why Roberts could play games last month. Not now. And Samuel Alito said the following thing, and I, and I can even show it to you on the screen. He said, and take a look at this. Oh, it's on me, I guess. There you go. He basically said that all ballots that came after 8 p.m. on November 3rd will be segregated, locked up, and not counted. They might even not be even counted at all. And then he, he added, and I'm adding that that's the last part. He said that this particular thing must be implemented by November 7th at 2 p.m. Now, you understand that um, this, of course, has not been implemented, unfortunately. And that's one of the things. Now, whether these ballots will even be valid or be uh, legitimate or not, that's something for the rest of the Supreme Court to decide. And with five versus four, I think I know where it's going anyway. But I just want you to know, folks, that the justice did not even think about who is right and who is wrong. The U.S. Constitution is very clear that the legislator of every state is setting all the rules and all the laws connecting to elections, not the court. Pastor Barry, what do you say about that? What do you know about that? Well, it's interesting that this was initiated, at least the extension of the voting date uh, by the governor. At least he made the effort and the legislature actually turned it back. And then the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, as you mentioned, actually sided with the governor in advancing this uh, Democrat agenda. Now, as you have mentioned, Amir, I think it's important to note that the Constitution very clearly defines the rules for holding a presidential election, as well as Congress and Senate uh, members, and the dates and the dating method and all those things are uh, clearly lined out. And, you know, in looking at what has happened, Justice Alito's directive was basically ignored. Uh, and, you know, that's a dangerous thing when yeah. you start ignoring the Supreme Court of the United yeah. States to further your agenda. So we do have things uh, to be concerned about, yeah. especially with the fact that you know, what they basically allowed was for something to arrive after the election yeah. uh, polls had closed, as long as it was postmarked uh, by November 3rd. And again, you know, every other state, every other election has always said, make sure you mail your ballot in early uh, so it arrives on, on or before election day, uh, because when the polls close, the election is over. So now we've got postal workers who are saying that they were instructed, exactly. for one in particular, a whistleblower, he's called, to change the dates, the postmark date, on I ballots that were set to arrive. So, the best of my knowledge, it was two of them that are now whistleblowers, not one. Well, could be. Yeah, one for sure, I know. Mm -hmm. So he's actually been suspended without pay uh, for his uh, whistleblowing action. So, you know, again, we've got uh, significant manipulation, especially in these battleground states where this type of thing yeah. is happening. Uh, and we've got, you know, obviously some issues that we need to be concerned about as Americans. And I think some uh, in the media have been, uh, at least not the, the mainstream media, but the online media, folks on Parler and other places are talking about the fact that, you know, Biden really cared about fairness and justice like he is espousing uh, now that he is acting in violation of the Logan Act, like he is president or president-elect, yeah. that is. He would be all for any... Yeah. Uh, movement towards justice, exactly. but he's not. He's uh, trying yeah. to uh, position himself as though he yeah. did actually win the election and not one single state has certified the vote as yes. of yet. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Joe Biden is not the president-elect of the United States of America. Make it very clear. Nope. He is projected. By the way, let me show you something very interesting. I want you to see, watch this. This is, um, if I'm not mistaken, a Facebook uh, thing and look what it says underneath. 
Both voting by mail and voting in person have a long history. That's Facebook writing have long history of trustworthiness in the US voter fraud is uh, uh, in the US voter fraud is extremely rare across voting methods so uh, this is uh, how they are um, literally brainwashing the people to think that nothing happened ladies and gentlemen joe biden is not the president elect he created a fake office of the president of the president elect nothing like that ever existed Look, not even a single elector has been already voted um, yet. And so legally, he is nothing yet. I mean, only the media declared it. And by the way, in the next few hours, and I believe in the couple next couple of days, even the media is going to flip one state after the other because things are being now um, uh, coming to light. Now, let me continue, Pastor Barry, to the other thing. Now, just so, so it's clear, Justice Alito basically said, guys, forget about it. The Constitution is clear, and the legislator of Pennsylvania made it very, very clear how the election should be. No one can change it, not even the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Now, right. and that brings us, Pastor Barry, to the Judicial activism versus the originalists, those who I uh, believe you can actually change or reinterpret the um, U.S. Constitution and those who are saying we must remain as is. And I would like I would like everyone to to listen carefully to the words of the new justice, Justice Amy Coney Barrett in her speech. Listen to this, folks. Listen to this. A judge must apply the law as written. Judges are not policymakers, and they must be resolute in setting aside any policy views they might hold. There you go. Judges are not policymakers. They must put aside their political view. They must look at the Constitution and decide after that one and that is why we know that the minute this case gets to the u.s supreme court this judge as well as the other two that trump nominated as well as alito that already told you what he's going to think as well as justice um, um clarence thomas we all know what they're going to vote so this is very very important thing for us to understand that now um, if, if SCOTUS, by the way, will not decide that way, he will empty the role of the legislators and that put the courts in charge. And this is exactly what the Democrats want. They want to pack the courts and so the legislators won't have any say anymore. Now, Pastor Barry, Rudy Giuliani and his team identified four main issues and people must understand those fair uh, those four main issues i will start with the first one trump ballots disappeared in wisconsin and in michigan in michigan we're talking about over um over um, 50 000 in one and over almost 200 000 in the other where and who took them away nobody can answer number two yeah, yeah go ahead Go ahead. Uh, Mayor, you know, I was thinking, I think it's important for us to understand how the uh, balance of power was set up in the United States, as you mentioned a moment ago. You know, if we consider how this was constructed by the founders, you know, we have the executive branch that enforces the law. We have the legislative branch that writes the law and we have the judicial branch that interprets the law. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, for the longest time, you would see when the Supreme Court would arrive at a decision it would be listed in the papers or through the media as the Supreme Court opinion. And what we seem to have forgotten is that the Supreme Court offers just that, their opinion of the interpretation of any given law, and Congress has the right to override the Supreme Court decision. Exactly. And yet we have had this particular power, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for whatever the Supreme yeah. Court says uh, is exactly. the way it's going to be. And, you know, I think just looking back on the initial uh, construction of the the House and Senate areas. I, initially, before the Supreme Court had their own building, 
their area where they met was right outside the uh, congressional hall, which yeah. symbolically meant we are watching over you. You exactly. are, you know, under You're our right. care. Right. We write the laws, not you. Yeah. And somehow this has gotten sideways uh, in these last days well, where the Supreme exactly. Court just writes laws. You're, you're right. It's gotten sideways because we're being indoctrinated. Uh, people are right now, they, you know, I, I want to tell the thousands of people that are watching, right, watching us right now, if you're watching mainstream media, you are doing yourself a major damage because somehow in the back of your mind, you think that Joe Biden won. In the back of your mind, you think everything is good. In the back of your mind, you think this is the process that should happen, whereas China knows it's not true. Russia knows it's not true. Mexico knows it's not true. Even Brazil, where I am, they know it's not true. And none of these presidents congratulated Biden because they know it. the process just began. These are contested elections. Everybody knows there are problems here. Now, look, I used to admire the U.S. elections because, you know, even when the person that you didn't vote for won, you knew it was fair and square. You lose some, you win some. That's it. I didn't like Clinton to vote to, to be elected twice. I didn't like Obama to be uh, elected twice. However, I accepted the process because that's the beauty of the American system. These elections are not the American system. These elections were stolen by, I mean, this, no one has ever seen anything like that in the history of American elections. And that is why it is so important to come to the truth of what is going on here for the American people to be able to vote in the future. And okay, so Rudy Giuliani's team found A, missing ballots of Trump, B, Republican observers were alienated in many counties, uh, play in, in many counting places, which cast, of course, doubt on the trustworthiness of these counts. We all know the only reason they took, they kicked them out is because we saw videos of them filling out ballots, throwing away ballots. And uh, there's a report of 450,000 ballots that the Republicans know of that didn't even have the Trump option. Now, watch this. C, there is a glitch or malfunctions in or scorecard and hammer. These are the um, election, um, well, election uh, software of some of those machines that flipped. Of course, we all heard about it. They flipped um, about three percent of of the votes to Biden automatically. Now, um, Pastor Barry, you know a little bit about that Lieutenant General that exposed that. He was number three in the U.S. Air Force very respected person. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's interesting that this was developed after 9-11 to monitor uh, the activity of terrorists, and it was hijacked, according to Lieutenant General uh, Thomas McInerney, and as you said, 35-year veteran of the Air Force, highly decorated, uh, four tours in Vietnam, uh, well-respected within the military community, and he was involved in the development of this, at least in an oversight uh, capacity. And he said that basically this has had uh, an insertion into the software where it's not just monitoring any type of traffic uh, chatter that's going on out there, but it now has within it the, the uh, capability, software capability, why during the transfer from the origination point to the final destination, that it will switch a certain number of percentage of votes from one category to the other. And one of his observations was that this, if there's not, uh, if there's a monitor on either end that is a legitimate monitor, then you have a way to to catch it if somebody's paying attention. But when you control the inbound and the outbound, or the deliverer and the recipient, and if they're both on the same team, it is virtually impossible to catch. So someone actually happened to catch this, thankfully. They caught it actually. Both the Dominion hard. software and the uh, Hammer and Scorecard software. Uh, have now been exposed as changing votes for yeah. Trump. It never changed them in the other direction. So it's not simply, it's a misnomer so to call it a glitch. It's not a glitch at all. Yeah, they change it to Biden. They never, apparently this software knows to do one thing from Trump to Biden, not the opposite. And uh, I know of two counties where they found it, 47 more counties 
are using exactly the same system. And now we're wondering if it happened there. By the way, it'll change dramatically the election results. Now, um, I also want you to know there is another problem. Apparently, Biden is a very popular candidate among the dead people. Over 1,000 dead people in Michigan alone voted for Biden, which yeah. added to a, a other horrible irregularities where there were backdating fraud and all of that. And add to that, Arizona uh, received a marker, people received a marker that basically could not be read by the voting machine uh, because it was it came all the way through the other side. I mean, they were handed the marker. You're talking about thousands right. of people that their, their votes did not count anymore. And all of this will trigger a manual recount. It'll uh, uh, take time, but tons of fraudulent ball uh, ballots are going to be disqualified. And that's enough to bring the count back to Trump in several places. Of course, even the Biden uh, uh, lead in Arizona is now shrinking because of Republicans that are now because of all the hoo-ha, are allowed to observe the situation where beforehand they were blocked. Now, Pastor Barry, watch this. The uh, Pew Research Center said, I mean, and it's a known fact, that up to 4% up to of the people normally will vote for one party for president and the other party for a Senate. In other words, 96% of the people normally vote for the same party, both for president and Senate, okay? 4% the most will have that one. Check that one out. They found out that in Michigan, the 4% rule actually only applied to Trump. But when it came to Biden, it was 10 times more than Trump. 7,000 people in Michigan voted for Trump and then for a Democrat senator, 70,000 voted for Biden and a Republican senator. That has never been seen before. These odds are absolutely mathematically impossible. That's In right. Georgia, Trump got 818 only, 818 ballots where he is president and a Democrat is a senator. The Democrats had 96,000 ballots where Biden is president and the Republicans are for Senate. Absolutely mathematically impossible. What do you have to say about that one? Well, the whole thing is mathematically impossible. The reversal of six states where Trump held a significant lead in some of those states that was basically unbeatable and the state should have been called long before that. And yet here you've got the shenanigans going on that allow for post-poll uh, closing yes. uh, votes to be counted. Uh, There's some states where it's been reported that underage people were sent ballots and allowed to counted, uh, allowed to be counted. Uh, we just had a report come out today that there were thousands, uh, some 25,000 nursing home uh, ballots that were submitted, all for Biden, of course, uh, that are now under suspicion. So the list just goes on and on and on and on. But I think you know just the general law of probabilities that somebody seeing 100% of after poll closing mail-in ballots going for one candidate, it just can't happen. The law of probability won't Absolutely. allow it. Now, Pastor Barry, let's come to the most important part, the options that Trump has. And, and I want everybody to understand that not only that Biden is not the president-elect, because constitutionally wise, I mean, nothing happened to announce him that, that way, but people need to understand, in case that all the legal ways that we talked about before, recount and, and fixing the, 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 you know, all the glitches, in, in case that one is not even working, there's still an opening for a gain with the electors. It may not happen, but it is possible. Listen to this. In the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, the president is not elected by the majority of the people in the country or the majority of the people in each state. That is wrong assumption. Ladies and gentlemen, in the United States of America, the president is elected by the electoral college consisting of 438 
people, these are real people, and that must um, they must come together on December 14th, cast their ballots. Anyone that is passing 270 uh, is president-elect. You understand that that never happened. That's December 14th. Until then, so much can happen and so much is going to happen. Now you need to understand, since the beginning of the 20th century, it was a tradition, it's not an abiding law, a tradition only, that the electors reflect the results of the election of the majority in their state. However, the electors are set, uh, for example, if Alabama, uh, uh, if, if Trump won in Alabama, all the electors will vote for Trump. Only this time, the results may actually dramatically surprise the nation. Why? It is possible that the electors will vote against the state. Now, why am I saying that? If the Pennsylvania legislator who is choosing the electors believe that the elections were stolen by the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, why would they choose an elector that will vote for Biden? Think about it. The electors, first of all, first of all, the electors are, are, are chosen by the Congress of each state. House and Senate in Arizona, in Michigan, North Carolina, in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, there is a Republican House and Senate. You understand that? So obviously the electors that are going to be voted for and then they will be sent to D.C. to cast their ballot. These electors are going to be of the Republican mindset. Now. Now, you have to understand, if it wasn't so, there would be no way to send an elector identified with one party. Now, look, if, for example, in Pennsylvania, the Senate would have been led by Democrats and, and the House by Republicans, it would be very, very, very uh, hard to send an elector that will reflect the opinion of both. But since both are Republican, it's super easy. Now, with five states, it won't be a problem. And these are key states, as I said. Now, you understand, I told you, Pennsylvania legislator is furious at the Supreme Court of that state and is furious that they bypassed Act 77 and threw it to the garbage. Now, we, we need to understand that um, if if this majority led of the House of Pennsylvania ordered to, uh, uh, excuse me, the majority leader of the House in Pennsylvania ordered all the material, all the paperwork of the elections to come to his hands. You know why? To prepare the ground for this, for the possible way of telling the elector, vote for Trump and not for Biden. Because why? The electors reflect the will of the people. If it's fraudulent, obviously the will of the people is not Biden, is Trump. And that is option number one. The electors will vote. These are known as un faithless electors. Faithless. Like, faithless electors. Pastor Barry, what do you know about that? Well, you know, that is an interesting proposition because the uh, Supreme Court just ruled in July that the electors have to vote according to uh, the popular vote of the state. So this would be a major move, a bold move on the part of faithless electors uh, in states where there's been fraud. And, you know, Amir, there's a there's a couple of other ways uh, for this thing to go in our direction. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of curious to see how this is going to play out. Because one, as you mentioned, the state legislature has to choose the electors for each individual state. That has to be certified by the secretary of state uh, of each individual state, and that has to be reported to the federal government by December 6th, and that gives them a week to arrange uh, the voting arrangement for the electorates in all 50 states to cast their vote for the candidate that uh, is represented by their state. So with all of this jumbled up and lawsuits and the counts and recounts and, uh, you know, the the uh, uh, votes that are being changed and monitored and and misdated and dates changed and all that, it's very possible that there cannot be a full 50 state certification of every single 
electorate because they're not done counting by then because of all the litigation, those other things. Now, if that takes place, there's something that's called a contingency election that is uh, originated in Article 2, Paragraph 3 of the Constitution, and it was amended again in uh, Article 12 of the Constitution, which says that at that point in time, the Congress will elect the President of the United States and the Senate will elect the Vice President of the United States. But here's the thing. This is where the rules change. One, every person in the Congress has to vote party line. And instead of all the members of Congress getting a vote, each state gets one vote. Exactly. Now, there's 26 Republicans represented and 22 Democrats represented in Congress, one vote per state. And that means that there will be 26 Republicans casting a vote in a contingency election. And then, of course, we know the Senate is uh, the dominant party there again, and the majority party is and Republican the, again. The so they would have to pick Pence. Exactly. Now, here's the, here's the terrifying thing. If the contingency election cannot arrive at a presidential candidate, then the Speaker of the House yes. becomes temporary president of the United States. Correct. And, uh, but then the he only saving part of that is it's the new Congress, and Nancy Pelosi's in trouble with her own party right uh, now. That's true. But I also want to tell you that if that happened, all of this goes to the Supreme Court. It, I mean, Supreme, right. the Supreme Court eventually is going to have to decide on all of these things on the, on the that will bring the Supreme Court back to the picture. And um, it, its conservative majority would definitely uh, tip the scale that the faithless electors, if that is the case, are validated are valid due to them voting accurately. Mm -hmm. And this is also an option valid as far as the president is concerned, because this is a rare due to conservative scotus. And listen, it's been a, a while since there is a majority in the Senate and in the Supreme Court uh, for the president. Okay. Which means that the cards that President Trump is holding in his hands right now if things are going to be still contested, are actually better cards than Biden has. And it has to be clear to everyone that Biden, not only that he's not the president-elect, but I don't see a possibility that he will be president-elect with all that is going on right now in these contested elections. You, you need to understand, folks, the media is now giving you a false show a false uh, display of something that is not real. It's not real. There is no such thing elected president, uh, president elect when only the media called him that. And by the way, Arizona is no longer for Biden, according to CNN. Right. So undecided. North, correct. North Carolina, by at least one media, is now Trump's. And in Arizona, the <laughs> The lead of Biden is shrinking and shrinking by the hour. Ladies and gentlemen, these elections are far from being over. And in fact, Trump has much better cards in his hands than the Democrats. Now, the Democrats, look what they did. This is an interesting narrative. What they did is this. They declared him as winner. They made sure that the world will know that he's winner. And then if Trump is going to win, which most likely is going to happen because of everything we just talked about, they will say that Trump stole the elections. Isn't that interesting? Legally, they stole the elections. The fraud was um, uh, exposed. We stopped it. We made sure that only the valid ballots will be counted. And look how they're going to convince the world that they, they, had it right, and Trump stole the election. Now, this is interesting because um, what did they do? They, they uh, disobeyed all of the Supreme Court uh, uh, rulings, both of Pennsylvania and of the United States, mm -hmm. and they mixed all the ballots together. And why? Because the, their slogan is, every vote counts. This is a slogan. Under that slogan, by the way, this slogan started in the Yale University by students. It's supposed to be a, a, a non-political movement of students. They started it already early enough to 
create a mantra where every vote counts, but that's not true. <laughs> I mean, illegal votes don't count. But what do you expect from a party that wants illegal immigrants to become legal? And now it's illegal votes that they want it to be legal. This is how it is. Well, hey, the Supreme Court eventually is the last stop. Now, Pastor Barry, um, my only concern, and I think the only case Trump is not going to win is if the Supreme Court has been compromised by the deep state. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. And Amir, I think that mantra should better be read, count every vote. It used to be every vote counts. Now it's count every vote, legal or illegal. That's and true. you're absolutely right. You know, we've seen, this has been actually my personal concern. We've seen some very... A bizarre behavior come out of the Chief Justice John Roberts, uh, where he has actually sided with the liberals when he was uh, positioned himself and presented himself as a staunch conservative. But he's made some decisions uh, in the past, particularly yeah. regarding Obamacare, where you know he actually voted against the conservative party uh -huh. and sided with something that, again, according to the Constitution, is illegal. You cannot force one American citizen to pay for something. For another American citizen, that's that's illegal, and you know basically this violates our constitutional rights mm -hmm. as individuals. So yeah, he's he's a matter of concern for me. But, but I'm I think not talking the about him. Barrett is crucial yeah. in uh, in moving this forward. Is, I think that's the miracle of of having Amy Coney Barrett, and this is Absolutely. why the Democrats were so angry because they count on justice roberts to always join the liberals they count on him he has been compromised i'm not sure what they have on him but they've got something on him however we've got now no longer four but five conservatives and that so far amy coney barrett throughout her own speech justice alito already throughout his own ruling and we know all the other three they mm -hmm. are all very much originalists, which means they will not interpret the Constitution differently than what it says regarding that, which, ladies and gentlemen, that's why they have to disqualify anything that came after 8 p.m. of November 3rd, or else it makes the legislator without effect. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the only thing, the only thing that I'm concerned about is that, and I pray and hope that um, what we see so far will remain. We have to pray hard for these people. Now, Pastor Barry, I wanted to show you something interesting. First of all, as you see, a lot of people wondered if Biden is president-elect. Take a look at this. At least real clear politics is not even saying that President uh, that the uh, Biden is president-elect. They did not give him Pennsylvania yet, as you can see. He is still at 259. Just so you know, it's, it's not over yet. And it's important that people see that. I also wanted you to see the following thing. New Judicial Watch study says, finds that 353 U.S. counties in 29 states with voter registration rates exceeding 100%. Something is very, very... <laughs> Weird about how can more than the voter registration, how can they all vote? Look, they say that more people supposedly voted for Biden than for Obama in, in 2012. This That's is right. obviously by far. Interest. Yeah, by far. Makes no sense at all. Um, now, look how the globalists that are centered in Europe, and you know, and I know, and I've been teaching for a long time, and That's so right. I think you. We believe that the Antichrist eventually will rise out of Western Europe. Right. Look how the German Der Spiegel, look how that German magazine described the elections in America and the Trump versus Biden. Watch this. They portrayed Trump as the one who beheaded the Statue mm -hmm. of Liberty and mm -hmm. it's bleeding and all of that. And look at Biden. Biden, with a black mask on his face, is the one who puts the head of the statue back. And that's how you make America great again. Yeah. Pay attention to how he is. He looks more uh, official. 
He is wearing the mask as they order you to do. And this man is already promising us a very dark winter when it comes. I think we already hear that he started a coronavirus committee and they're already saying that everyone that leaves his house must wear a mask. Am I right? Yeah, and Amir, that points uh, back to something you shared a little bit ago about how the manipulation is in full swing by the media to present him as the uh, president-elect of the United States, even though he hasn't been certified under any one stretch of the imagination. But the important thing, I think, is exactly what you pointed out, because the reality is, is they're trying to present him as such, and every one of these steps that he is taking is in violation of the Logan Act that I mentioned before. And the Logan Act basically says that a president-elect will respect the sitting president and not seek to override or influence uh, in any way uh, what his policies are going to be or indicate in any way what his policies are going to be, his cabinet posts are going to be. He's act, Biden has actually suggested that Trump ought to just step down now so he can take over and start putting things in order. So again, you know, they are building toward exactly what you said, to present Trump as though he murdered liberty and Biden is the great savior of the United States and Lady it's Liberty. Narrative and that, uh, yeah. it's all manipulation. Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is an elephant in the room right now. You may not see that elephant. It's in the room. And it's called Netanyahu's greeting mm. to Joe Biden. As an Israeli, thousands of people sent me emails and, and messages disappointed. What do you think? What do you think? I I wanted to I want to make it super clear to all of you. I was extremely disappointed and I went to check what is exactly going on there. Why did Netanyahu eventually uh, greeted Biden for his supposedly victory? Let me explain. By the way, I completely disagree with it. I believe it is a mistake also for the long run for him, but let me explain at least it's not an excuse, but it's at least an explanation of what you may not know that was going on over there in Israel that led him to say or to tweet that, that thing. First of all, he never called him president-elect. He wished him uh, success. But let me explain what happened. Israel right now is in a political crisis. Netanyahu had to join forces with his political enemies to create a unity government. It's almost like there is a government within a government. The part of the government that is not his party ran and rushed to congratulate Biden. The opposition congratulated Biden and everybody accused Netanyahu for sabotaging the relationship between Israel and America by not greeting Biden. You see, the mindset is that Biden won. And if Biden won and most of the world greeted him, Netanyahu is causing major damage. Now, Netanyahu knows he's about to be going to another election in a few months. There's no doubt about it. He understands that he has to do something. Now, Netanyahu is perceived as a very strong leader outside. Everybody around the world can you know, respect him. But what you may not know is in the inside, he is super, super... Um, um, afraid uh, and he makes a lot of decisions based on fear because he must keep his his uh, coalition or else he will not be the prime minister and we will not talk about him as prime minister of Israel and that is exactly what happened fear based and fear led um, mindset I believe led him to do that in under the pressure of the opposition and the little government within his government that is doing that. I believe it's a big mistake because, you know, if China and Russia, Mexico and Brazil, they did not congratulate Biden because they know it's far from being at look, they never heard the fat lady sing. You know, they say it's not over. It ain't over until the fat lady sings. Forgive me for using that. That's a very well known phrase from the opera world. And also, if I'm not mistaken, baseball or football in America from 1976 or something. But China and Russia, Brazil and Mexico never heard the fat lady singing. Now, it's not over yet. All of them are well versed with the American 
system and constitution to know that what what is being displayed now is just lies. Biden is not the president-elect. Why would they congratulate someone that only CNN and Fox News call, I mean, call him a projected president-elect? That's it. It's two t it's TV channels. Since when the media is setting or calling the shots or telling the world who the next president is, there is a legal process. There is a there is a, a in a constitution, and Netanyahu made a super big mistake, I believe. But I need you to understand, all of that is pressure from within because he really needs to keep his government intact, or at least have a chance in the next elections if he wants to stay the prime minister. Again, I believe it's a mistake. He would have gained many points with Trump if he waited. He didn't and he might suffer some consequences in the future. Now, Pastor Barry, you and I know that Iran is the biggest winner from this whole situation right That's now. Right. Am I right? Yeah, Biden has promised within the first months of his pre presidency that he will rejoin the jo Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action and basically side with Iran over Israel and uh, basically give them again the opportunity to, not that they've ever stopped enriching uranium, but to enrich uh, up to weapons grade within 10 years of the origination date uh, of this plan under Obama. We also have to remember that they have demanded uh, not just an apology, but also financial reparations oh, for yes. all the damage that was caused uh, by the sanctions that were implemented yes. by President Trump. And, you know, we have to also keep in mind, Biden came from an administration that handed money to the Iranians like there was no tomorrow. Yes and basically continue to finance their nuclear program, uh, albeit uh, between or through the back door and underground. And so this is where things are going to go. And here, here, Amir, here's where I think American Christians need to uh, remember and keep their minds focused on this. There's a blessing associated with blessing Israel, and there's a curse associated with cursing Israel. And in this sense, you know, we're basically siding with someone who has sworn to the demise of Israel, the destruction of the nation, the elimination of the people whom God has chosen and called his own. And this is bad for America uh, to rejoin this joint comprehensive plan of action. Uh, and we can tell simply because of those who support it and who remained in it, uh, the very yeah. countries that I agree. Uh, the, the Antichrist is going to be birthed out of. Now, I would like to show you both uh, Barry and the rest of the people, there's thousands of people that are watching. I am apologizing in advance for the content of what you're about to see. And the reason I show it to you is not anything but to, to display how emboldened the Iranians are now in light of what the media is projecting as if Biden is the winner. I want to show you something terrible. Take a look at this artwork that the Iranians prepared. The Iranian Ayatollah is burying Trump. Take a look. And you see all the other former presidents already with their tombstones. It's like, we will bury your presidents. You will not bury us. We will bury you. Now, that actually is delicate compared to this one. This is a video, ladies and gentlemen. It's a video. Uh, again, I am apologizing in advance for the content, but I think you need to see it. Take a look at this one. That's, ladies and gentlemen, this is the video that I was telling you about, and um, terrible. And, and what you see now is not really different than what many democratic displays uh, um, we saw in the last four years, including the last weekend, when they had a big uh, puppet of President Trump on the street, and they all kicked his head, and and but... What we're watching right now is, it's one thing when American lunatics are doing that. It's one thing when the 
enemy of America is telling the whole world, we are going to avenge the killing of Soleimani and his uh, friends uh, by uh, making sure that your president is going to die. This is the direct result of the lunacy that is being projected right now by the Democrats. Right. You, I, I guess you you agree with me, Pastor Barry. Well, you know, Amir, this brings up something that I think is so crucial in our understanding here as American citizens. You know, because we've watched Hollywood, we've watched many others uh, on the fringe of different political elements make threats against the president. You know, he needs to be killed. Uh, this needs to happen, and that needs to happen. And you know, it's kind of interesting because threatening the president of the to kill the president of the United States is a Class C felony which means it has mandatory jail time associated with it. And yet we've had, you know, this indoctrination going on in our country where this type of thing is normalized, where, you know, a generation ago, there would be no talk of public talk of socialism or communism or threatening the president or anything along those lines because there was respect for the law. But there's no respect for the law anymore. Lawlessness is abounding. People are saying, you know, you've got that comedian, uh, Kathy Griffin, I think was her name, where she's holding yes. up, you know, Trump's head yeah. and basically has been severed from his body and covered with blood. Madonna and, uh, said you know, she wants to bomb the White House, if I'm not mistaken. Madonna yeah, exactly. Said. Exactly. And, you know, these these are crimes. And, uh, you know, we've really kind of, I think, missed the, uh, the opportunity to set the record straight uh, for these kind of actions in our country. You know, we saw all these Democratic uh, mayors. And uh, governors just let their cities be destroyed, people's businesses be burned to the ground and just stood aside and, and watched yeah. it all happen. And, you know, so so who is the one that is destroying America? It's yeah. the one who's for law and order. And he's the one that has the effigy of him yeah. and uh, burned. And then the one who's uh, cutting off Lady Liberty's head yeah. and all that when he's actually standing for what America has long stood for and has moved away from in this last generation. Exactly, exactly. And and, and it's interesting because uh, they call him racist, yet among blacks and Asians and Hispanics, we've seen record numbers of voters for Trump this time. In fact, right. amongst the white ones, it actually declined. I mean, so much for a racist. Huh? People get it. They understand they're not that stupid. They, they can see how the Democrats are... Are, are fooling them, but the Democrats had that plot. That is now. I believe. I believe Barry that it's not just the Democrats. I believe that it's beyond. I believe this is a direct order by the world elite, the globalist, to take Trump down at any cost. For the past four years, they've realized how dangerous he is for the for the right. globalist movement. They, they've seen that this man is the worst nightmare that could ever happen to them. And the order was given, A, for the Democrats to deploy, B, for the media to react, C, for the world leaders to accept it. And, uh, for example, how do you explain Fox News calling Arizona for Biden minutes after the polls were, were closed, when even now it's too close to call. Yeah. There is something fishy here, and I, I'm not sure how to explain it, but I know one thing. These things are not things that are, are just uh, you know, done in an amateur way. These are plots. These plots are carefully planned. These plots require billions of dollars and these plots required a lot of people behind the scene. And what, and I, you know, last few days ago, Pastor Mike and myself, when we talked about this plot, it's at least three years old. And so what we're watching is very well organized crime that is headed by far superior people than the clowns of, of the Democratic Party. By the way, we see more stuff going on in the Middle East. Uh, Saudi Arabia just a couple hours ago declared the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. Yeah. Pastor Barry, why would they do that? Who is the biggest sponsor of the Muslim Brotherhood? Well, you've got uh, someone who is vying for 
the role of Sultan and reestablishing the Ottoman Empire over in Turkey. And uh, he has really been one of the main financiers uh, of the Muslim Brotherhood. And, you know, so again, you've got the, the Sunni Shia issue that is always uh, raising its head. And then you've got, you know, the Iranian issue as well, exactly. you know, that causes the Saudis so uh, think to, about it. to have the position that they have with Israel. The Muslim Brotherhood of the, of the first organization that greeted Biden. Did you know that? It, 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 it's quite amazing. The Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization on behalf of the Sunnis. The Hezbollah and all of the others from Iran are the Shiite. And all of those terrorists greets Biden. And so what Saudi Arabia did, they declared them as a terrorist organization. The Muslim Brotherhood started in Egypt. So, and of course, President Assisi in Egypt is fighting them. Qatar is financing them. So what we're watching now, so Al Jazeera is, is all promoting them, by the way. So what we're watching right now is how Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states are getting even closer and closer to Israel because they are now more and more afraid of what they're seeing happening with Biden and the prospect of the renewal of the Iran deal. And um, the Emirates just signed a deal with America to buy F-35s and they want it now. They want it now. You know, the level of anxiety among the good countries is skyrocketing and the level of boasting in arrogance and pride among the terrorists is through the roof. You know, it's it's just unbelievable to see that. And I cannot imagine why Americans would even think that it's anything good, both to America or to the rest of the world, for Biden to be the president. And 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 Pastor Barry, let's let's go back to the fact that President Trump is the president, and actually he's got a much better cards in his hands to win these elections than Biden. Yeah, he does legally without question. And, you know, again, just watching all this manipulation is sad as an American. And I know there's a lot of other people that feel the same way I do. It's just it's hard to believe that this is happening uh, in our wonderful country. And Amir, as you were talking, something else occurred to me. And, uh, you know, we all wonder about where's the U.S. in the uh, the last day scenario, the prophetic scenario. Why aren't they protesting, uh, you know, the invasion of Israel? Why is it Sheba and Dedan or the Arab Gulf states that are doing the protesting when Israel is invaded uh, from the north by Turkey, Iran, Sudan, uh, and Libya, and uh, Russia? Why, why is it that the U.S. is silent? And, you know, it just popped in my head as you were going through uh, this Russian events we're seeing today is that, under a Biden presidency, it is very possible uh, that he could sit on his hands and say, you know what, Israel has this coming. And, uh, you know, they've been the real problem in the Middle East. And, you know, we're just going to yeah. let the chips fall where they may, you know. So exactly. that's a rather horrifying uh, proposition. But it's entirely possible when you have as part of your campaign pitch that you're going to re-enter this joint comprehensive plan of action. Uh, that pretty much says where you're going to be down the road as it pertains to Israel. It wouldn't surprise me if you tried to move the, the uh, embassy back to Tel Aviv and uh, reverse all the wonderful things that Trump has yes. done in our relationship. So the Palestinians uh, already said, to solve the that issue. The Palestinians already said to Biden, move the embassy back to Tel Aviv. Let's work for a different deal with the Palestinian state. The Palestinians came back to life right now. I mean, they really think this is it. Trump is gone. Israel is no longer favored by, by the Americans. And let's move to a different. But it's funny because they've already lost Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states and Egypt and maybe even Jordan. And all they're left with is Iran and Turkey right now, which fits yeah. Bible prophecy in a sense. Now, yeah. Pastor Barry, uh, let's talk a little bit Bible, uh, because after all, we <laughs> we really want to give people a lot of hope um, and yes. only the scriptures can give us that. Um, I want you, you know, you live in America, I live in Israel, we're blessed countries, you know, yes. but most of the world, they don't get a nice, smooth election process at all. I mean, most of the world is not blessed with what America and Israel have been blessed by for the longest time. And so we need to 
don't you think we need to be thankful for what we had so far, even if we are not having it anymore? Because to begin with, we never deserved it. Yeah, absolutely. I was just talking with someone today from a church we planted in another continent and country, and uh, he was commenting that, um, oh, we're used to crooked elections. They're all like that. Exactly. And uh, we are very, very fortunate in our countries to have Israel with the only democracy in the Middle East, true democracy. And the United States as a uh, uh, basically a constitutional republic. And, you know, we're, we're not a strict democracy and democracy is just majority rules. We have the electoral college, which keeps the balance of the voters uh, all being involved in every state. But yeah, we are super fortunate to have the opportunity, not just to vote and to have our voice heard, but also we have the opportunity to preach the gospel without fear of persecution here in the United States. And, you know, Amir, sadly, that's uh, changing as well. I'm not sure uh, where you went, but I see you've disappeared off the screen. Uh, I don't know if you all out there can still see him or if he's still with us or not. But I just want to encourage you all. We've we've tried to, to be messengers of hope throughout this whole thing. And, and it is hard. It's hard for us to see this happen. But let me remind us all of something. I mean, there is, uh, I love a guy named Ray Comfort always says, the bad news makes the good news better. And the bad news is things are going south in our country. He says that obviously in the context of the gospel. But the bad news that we're seeing happening in our country is an indication that we need to keep looking up for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because, uh, Amir, as we have been talking, I, I couldn't help but think, you know, like Angela Merkel said, Trump is undoing everything we work for. He's destroying everything we work for. We being the leftist globalists. And we have to remember that the ruling empire regime during the tribulation, according to Revelation 13, is satanically empowered. And we are moving in that direction. And therefore, we would expect to see the father of all lies creating lies uh, within those who are serving and advancing his agenda. And that's really what we're seeing today. Uh, yes. Lots Uh, where the Lord is going to have uh, give a signal to that angel to purse his lips to the trumpet, make that blast, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain will meet them in the air. And Paul said when he made that statement uh, that we need to comfort one another with these words. So even in these perilous times predicted by Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, where there's major character changes in humanity, that are uh, dominant and prominent with around uh, around the world and even infiltrate the church, we still are a people of hope. Uh, Jesus is coming for us. He said he's gone to prepare a place for us that where he is, we may be also. And he said, if I'm going, I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. So we should be looking for the, and living with the expectation that the Lord is coming for us soon. So I don't know if Amir is going to, make it back. Uh, looks like he just rejoined, so he should pop up on the screen uh, any moment. But don't lose hope. Don't allow these things to overshadow the wonderful things that Christ has done for you. I'd like to remind our church, nothing can separate us from his love, and no one can snatch us from his hand. And that's far more important than any election that takes place here on earth. Nothing about the nature and character of God has diminished his worthiness to be praised and exalted, and loved, and honored, and revered uh, every day of our lives. So let's uh, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and allow him to add all the things we need unto us, including hope, including stability. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind, even okay. in times such as these. Welcome back. Yes, thank you, Pastor Barry. Uh, thank you for pray. Did you just pray, by the way? No. Okay. Oh, no, right. I can. <laughs> oh, oh I'm, I'm so sorry. By the way, I still cannot see you on my screen, but it's okay. I just want to tell everyone, this is, there's a technical issue. I lost you. You may have lost me, but um, why don't we do this? Uh, let's uh, remind ourselves. Wonderful. Let's remind ourselves that um, um, we need to remember that Christ is still on the throne. Amen. And we need to remember, there's so many verses, by the way, Pastor Barry, I, I mean, everything is stuck right now. Unfortunately, I cannot show it. Uh, my screen is, is, I'm not sure what's going on, but I prepared. Yeah. 
Well, again, obviously we've got uh, a glitch where uh, he is. Well, now I guess we can only have one split screen at a time. Uh, as he is uh, quoting us here, that God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. This wonderful quote from Galatians is a great reminder to us. Looking at chapter 2, verse 20, actually it's my wife's life verse, that I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ now lives in me. And indeed, what a glorious and wonderful truth that is. And it's still true today, just as it was true on November 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and beyond, that uh, we are the possession of Christ, bought with his own blood, and therefore eternally secure in his outstretched arms and hands. So uh, we should be thankful for that and bless the name of the Lord for that. And I don't know if Amir is going to make it back or not. So uh, let's go ahead and pray. And if he jumps back on, he can wrap things up. So, Father, we again are grateful. We're thankful for, as Amir said, the wonderful things we've experienced in our history as the United States, the beautiful blessings we've seen that you have poured out on the nation of Israel in their brief modern history, and how you've taken that desert land and caused it to bloom with roses and flowers and vegetation and fruit and all, and people as well. So we're grateful for that. And Lord, we thank you for these United States. We thank you for President Trump's support of Israel. And we pray, God, that this would have the opportunity to continue. We ask you uh, for a four-year respite again from the advance of lawlessness and globalism uh, in our country by allowing the truth to prevail. And Lord, should it be legitimate uh, that Joe Biden won the presidency, help us to be good citizens, and uh, Lord, the most trustworthy uh, within our country. And uh, Lord,